period. Okay? And I don't have that in there, but smoking causes disease and death. Sitting too much causes disease and death. Any questions about that? Pretty somber, I know. This is a great book. Um, it's funny, I was listening to the radio yesterday, and this author was being interviewed. It was, it was great. Um, it's an author, he works for the Mayo Clinic um, in Arizona, I believe. Um, and he has a book called Move a Little, Lose a Lot. And he, has made, he works with diabetics, he works with um, obese individuals, uh, and he takes work site environment to really maximize weight loss without saying, hey, you're overweight, unless you're doing a marathon in the next six weeks, there's nothing we can do for you. Um, move a little, lose a lot. It looks at NEAT, which is non-activity thermogenesis, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Calories burned when you're not exercising, like what we're doing right now, okay? So it's a great book. Let me go into it just a little bit. Um, if you look at the pie chart here, 60% um, of calories burned are just through metabolism. Just to help with our heart beating, our lungs breathing, our brain processing, normal basal metabolic rate, 60% of calories burned. Now we look at exercise, and I'm a huge fan of exercise. We look at exercise, only 10% of calories expenditure through exercise. That's the same as we burn through digestion. Okay? 20% through that non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Now what is that? That could be anything from getting up and going to get, get yourself a cup of coffee. That could be walking to your office versus driving as close as you can and then getting to your office. That means taking the stairs instead of taking Excuse me, taking the elevator. When I give this talk over at uh, Diablo, anybody been out to Diablo? You guys, oh, yes, no. right? Yeah, yesterday. Okay. Right? Um, yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> so, in that, you know, I go in and I'm going to talk about movement. Well, everyone there has to walk, what, five miles just to get to their desk? Uh, by the time you get through security and walk around the whole building and you go up the stairs. and So it's not an issue for them. They're moving. Regularly, but for a lot of us, it's can okay, I find that that closest parking space, and then can I take the elevator, and then can I get to my seat? That's not activity, but energy being burned, um, and this is how it works. We all have a monthly budget, and usually that main budget involves our um, our mortgage or our rental. It involves our food consumption, maybe a car payment. Um, obviously caring for our kids uh, and then those little things right they always creep up on us the coffee the gift for a friend the extra movie that we didn't account for I mean, at the end we're always scratching our head going how did it get to be so much um, need works the same way it's those little things throughout your day if you're gonna be in an office environment and or if you're gonna be driving around in the ambulance that will add up okay you know, today, let's, let's park at the farthest space away from Starbucks and then walk and get our cup of coffee. Um, let's make sure that if we can, let's get out for five minutes and just walk around the truck if we have to. Okay? If it's office, again, you can walk far away, um, do laps around. I'm going to give you a couple suggestions. There's plenty of different ideas that you can come up with to create movement. Um, and before I get to those, I'm going to. Um, Bring up the apple, and not your apple in the back, although I'm glad you brought one. <laughs> I brought a whole oh, I, I, I know you, I'm sorry, I brought no, the good. apple. I saw it. I know, it's great, you brought the prop. So the adage, an apple a day, keeps the doctor away, right? We all know it. And now, when you hear the adage, right, when you hear the adage, what do you think? Eating fruit. Health is good for you. Eating fruit's good for you. If you do something healthy, it's going to be good for you, right? Well, the wisdom in the, ad, the apple a day adage is not in the fruit. It's in the a day part. Because when we look at eat well, move well, be well, when we look at all the information out there that's overwhelming, the reality is 
unless you're able to do it on a regular basis, it really doesn't matter much. And so the apple a day keeps the doctor away. The wisdom is if you do something healthy on a regular basis, whether it be walking at lunch, whether it be parking far away every day, whether it be getting up every half hour, it's that regularity, that movement on a regular basis that has so much, such a profound effect on how our bodies are healthy. And so, because what happens is, and I hear this all the time in my office, I know I should do that, right? I know I should exercise. I know I should take fish oil. I mean, they come in there and tell me what they should do, which it tells me that they won't be doing, right? Because they haven't made a habit of it. Um, or, or another way to look at it is should, won't, want, will, right? The shoulds that walk in generally don't happen. The wants, where, when it finally hits you where you're like, this is a priority, you will. So if it's an apple, I'm gonna eat an apple a day. You, you made that point where you're going, I want this to happen. I wanna be healthy. So on a daily basis, I'm gonna do something to make that happen. Here's some ideas for you. Um, stand up desk, right? You guys have heard this. Stand up desk, and again, they, this may not apply to this group as much. However, it can apply in the home as well. Um, if sitting is the new smoking, of course, Americans are going to do it best by standing for 8, 10, 12 hours a day and go, hey, I'm not sitting. It's not the message. Okay? Standing is good for us. Movement is good for us. Slouching is good for us. Knee up on the chair is good for us. Crossing our legs are good for us. But anything done over time, our bodies tend to stop adapting. And so standing desks are fantastic. We're seeing a huge explosion of standing desks, um, and they're not ergonomic where we're getting support. It's just, now get up. Now let's move around a little bit. Let's fidget a little bit. And I recommend having a standing desk with a chair that goes up and down, or a desk that goes from a sitting to standing position. Does anybody have those at the office here? No, they, no. they've got the balls. They got the balls, okay. So let's go to that, therapy balls. Therapy balls are nice because they take a stable environment like a chair and they make it unstable. So now you're having to move a little bit. Muscles aren't going on vacation and your body gets that movement on a regular basis. The problem with ball chairs, which I like, is you tend to be great with them at the beginning, working, and then you start getting tired and then you hang out like this, right? One position over time, not good for us. So it's great to have a ball chair. Therapy discs work the same way. They're small discs filled with air. You put them on your seat if you don't want to have a big ball chair. So now you're moving your rear end back and forth, front and back. Uh, great movement. Uh, burpees, right? Everybody know what burpees are? Some don't. Burpees, a combination of push-ups, squats, um, and planks. So they're an overall body workout. Maybe do burpees at noon. Maybe do burpees after a call once you leave the hospital. Uh, although I have a feeling your adrenaline's going pretty good at that point. Oh, right? Can't call it. Can't clear. We're good. We're good. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. Just yeah. Do, last week we were doing 20 push-ups after each call, yes. and then on Sunday we did 30 squats, squats after each call. Oh, nice. We did 330 squats. There's your role model right there. Nick, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Blackfish yeah. in it. It's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> Have walking meetings. Um, some of these, again, these don't apply to you if you're, in a, in a, if you're not in an office environment. Um, the one I like, if there's one activity to take with you, it's the two-minute challenge. Uh, just staple by hand. <laughs> staple by hand. Don't have your Xerox machine do all the staple. Oh. Oh, just movement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's some, but uh, you, you get the idea, yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's the same way. But stand up for a minute. Everybody stand up. The two minute challenge, I probably give to almost every single patient. Because during my eval, I do two things. One is I, I ask you to bring one knee straight up in the air, and I ask you to balance on one leg. And most people go, yeah, my balance sucks as they do it. I go, nice job. Okay, and everybody's doing it here. And then I say, great, now close your eyes. And so everybody closes their eyes, 
and they, then they get their arms out, and they wobble, and eventually they fall. Okay? Now, when we navigate our world, we do it visually, we do it auditorily, and then we do it through receptors in the muscles of our body and joints and ligaments. And what happens with inactivity, sedentary living, age, we tend to rely more on our vision, a little bit on our ears, and less on our body. And we see that with the older population, we tend to see more walking like this, right? Or more concern when stepping off a curb because they don't have that proprioceptive awareness. So the two minute challenge, do it on the phone, do it wherever you are, uh, standing on one leg, 30 seconds. Okay, you can do it in a doorway, you can hold onto your desk, whatever you want. You switch to the other side, 30 seconds. You go back, and then you, you close your 